Welcome to another how-to video from Bugspray.com. In this video, I'll be discussing the trap options that you'll employ now that you've gotten your rodent or small animal feeding at certain locations in the home. This is part two of our three-part series of videos which detail a game plan that you can use in and around the home for controlling and eliminating invading animals. In video one, I talked a lot about making the bait placement, whether it was inside the home or outside, and getting animals to accept it. At this point, you need to have that acceptance. So assuming that they're taking your bait, you can now proceed with one of these trap options. The trap options will be either a live trap or a kill trap. The live traps are my favorites overall because animals do not become afraid of them and I've had tremendous success. This particular trap back here is a cage trap. So it uses wire that is shaped in a square, obviously, and it's got your simple door that opens, locks open, and is latched to a trip pan that's back there. When the animal steps on the trip pan, the door closes and locks behind them. This trap will be well suited for outside applications, specifically with large animals like a gray squirrel, for example. A gray trap for use inside as well, attic spaces, any place that you have an animal that you feel would be too big for these smaller traps. The cage trap does have a limitation in that it's not solid. So on these sides, have little areas where animals can escape and if you have a vole or a flying squirrel it is possible they'll be able to escape the trap once they're caught inside with the door closed if you find this trap is activated and the bait is taken and there's no animal in there you're gonna have to move on to this trap this trap is my favorite trap of all I have had one in service now for almost 20 years I have trapped hundreds of animals with it. It's very, very simple to uh, employ. It has obviously an entrance door, and this is where animals will enter once it's set. But what I love about it is that you can just open up the back panel. You can place your bait back here, a little pecan paste and bird seed, and then close up the rear side. You can then use this inside or outside the home, and setting it is just as easy, you just depress the front door. It's got a little locking mechanism right there and the trap is set. When animals enter, they'll hit a trip pan that's back inside there. And when they hit the trip pan, the door will then close behind them and they'll be caught. This trap is by far your best option for virtually all animals. The only animal that would not work on well would be an adult gray squirrel. I've captured young gray squirrels with it I've caught chipmunks, voles, shrews, mice, rats. It just does it all. So for me, this is the go-to trap in many situations, and you can't go wrong with this particular one. If you decide that you want to live trap, remember, after you've caught the animal, either destroy it or relocate it 10 miles away from the home. If you decide that killing the animal is the easiest and most efficient way for you to proceed. One of these kill traps will do the job. I am using this particular design here. I have probably three or four around my home, maybe one inside, and I keep them active year round. They are very easy to use and their design is such that it makes it easy to service the snap trap that's built inside. It's also easy to uh, bait and it's also easy to maintain as far as keeping it clean. To get inside the trap, what you wanna do is there's a little tab back here and you wanna use a coin or say a screwdriver and then just pull that tab away from the bottom. It's a hinge design, so it will open up and inside you'll find a little snap trap. The snap trap, very easy to set, but what's cool about this is that it has a cup here. That's where you'll place your pecan paste add a little bird seed and then after you've done that you just close it up snap it up to where it's tight again 
And then to set, you just pull this trigger down. What you're looking for is that red flag. When you see the red flag up top, it tells you that it's set. And at this point, any animal that enters and hits that little trip pan inside there will have the trap set off on them and they'll be caught. So I just deactivated the trap and released it. Uh, these traps are perfect for use around the house where you have inclement weather such as rain because the cover protects the bait placement. So you don't have to worry about bait getting washed away or destroyed. It's also perfect for use inside. I've had several of these in use now for about uh, three years and they have caught well over 50 animals. I don't know that I've caught 100 animals with them yet. This particular trap that I have, this one that you're looking at, I've had for over five years and it's caught 25 to 50 animals. This one over here is a brand new one. I have one that I should have brought for this video. Maybe I'll show it in part three. The trap that I have is almost 20 years old and has caught hundreds of animals. This smaller version of the covered kill trap is better suited for mice or voles. Same concept, it's got a little tab here that you use to open it up. And then the bait is placed in that little cup. This trap is much smaller, meaning the snap trap itself is smaller, but the hole is not really dramatically small, just a little bit if you look. So you'll still get some larger animals going in there, but there's a risk that they might take the trap away if they are strong and large. You also have the potential for a larger animal to stick its hand in there and activate the trap and throw it around to where you're losing efficiency because you're not using a big enough one. So in general, the larger covered kill trap is the best way to proceed. It will capture small mice. I have done that many, many times, but it also works on large animals. I've had squirrels that can only get their heads in there get captured. So it can work on a range of animals and would be my second go-to trap. The first being this live trap here. So for me, this live trap is the one that I would choose first. The kill trap is handy if you don't feel like relocating the animal. So in summary, once you've had your bait offerings taken by the local animal that's either active inside the house or around the house, it's time to proceed to the trapping. That's what this video is about and what we call part two. And when you begin this process, understand that it will take a little time. So what you need to do is focus on getting your traps well placed, watching them and changing out the bait and obviously removing animals as they're caught. The goal for this step is to be able to eliminate the activity and then not have any new activity for at least two weeks. Once you go two weeks with no new activity, so no new droppings, no sounds in the wall or attic, no damage being done to food items, you can then safely assume you've eliminated the current population of active animals, and then you can proceed to step three. In step three, the video that you'll watch after this will discuss odor elimination both inside and outside the home, and we'll talk about setting up some sound repellers to make sure no animal that finds your home again will want to move inside and take up residence. So thank you for watching this how-to video from bugspray.com.